Hello, my name is Roland Reyer. I am a technical specialist at Autodesk Media Entertainment in Europe. In this video, I'd like to talk about the new cached playback feature in Maya 2019 and how to use it together with the evaluation toolkit and the profiler. About six years ago, Nicolas Devaux from the French company Cube Creative made this wonderful animation of giraffes diving in an indoor swimming pool. The company was kind enough to provide us with an original scene of this animation so that we could use it to test the new parallel evaluation in Maya 2016. I have now retrieved this scene to test the new cached playback in Maya 2019. As you can see, the performance with the complete environment is not so good, so I will first switch off all objects that are not necessary for the creation of the animation. Now that I have only the two giraffes left here and the diving board, let's have a look at the performance. So when I hit play, you see that the scene is really slow. We start with something less than one frame per second and then it gets a bit faster. And you know, the maximum that we can reach here is about two frames per second. This also comes from the fact that I'm recording the screen. So without screen recording, it would be something like 2.5 frames per second, but still way too slow to see something in real time. So what animators have to do when they have a scene like this and many scenes like are, are that very slow, they have to go to the Windows menu and start a Play Blast. So what Play Blast does is to record the screen, maybe in a smaller resolution. That takes, of course, as long as it takes to play the complete timeline. And then it compiles a video that lets you see the animation in real time, whatever that frame rate would be. So I'll hit Escape here to interrupt that. Here you see the little video and how it plays in real time. Of course, you cannot tumble the camera anymore because it's baked into the video. Our engineers found out that the animators do this every five minutes and it holds them up for at least two minutes, which is a lot of time during the day. So let me close this here. So I can now play around with the scene and try to turn off things and try to play around with the, with the giraffe rigs to make this a little bit faster, but there's also a way to properly analyze the scene. Here in Windows and the General Editors, you will find the Evaluation Toolkit, which is a toolkit that allows you to analyze the scene and turn on and off various features of um, the Maya core. So for example, you see here that the Evaluation Mode is still uh, still set to the dependency graph evaluation method, which is the, a serial one core evaluation method, which of course is much slower than the parallel evaluation that was introduced in Maya 2016. I can s actually see this evaluation method in the so-called profiler. You can either launch it from here or under Windows General Editors the profiler from here. So the profiler works so that you start the recording and then it would record up to 20 megabyte in this example of data from the evaluation of the current seed. I hit playback and as soon as you see some data appearing here in this window, you can actually stop it. These are the 20 megabytes that I was talking about. Then you highlight one of these frames and hit A to frame everything and to have a look at it. What do we see here? As I said, we are still in dependency graph evaluation and it, this works so that in the first pass, the so-called dirty propagation puts all the nodes in a certain order that is necessary to get the proper results. And then in the second pass after this first one, all nodes are actually evaluated or calculated their final positions. So, for example, we see the two giraffes here in this region and that's why it takes so long. So the whole scene or this whole frame took over 700 milliseconds, 720 milliseconds. So it's no wonder that it's pretty slow, actually. Now let's set this to parallel evaluation and redo the whole thing. So I'm going to rewind here. I start recording. 
and then I hit play for a few frames. You see already that it's faster, so we are over two frames here, reaching even three th frames per second. So that is already an improvement. Let me select one of these frames and hit A and you see the difference already. There is no dirty propagation anymore. The whole evaluation takes place together with this dirty propagation. So the sorting of the frames um, is done together. You can also see this parallel evaluation, for example, here in the thread view, because you know it distributes all the tasks to different threads. Very nice, but we still see, you know, more than two thirds of the frame are done with very single tasks here. So here, for example, we see that there's an evaluation of a skin cluster node takes very long. Oh yeah, these are the two skin cluster nodes or the two skins of the giraffes, which are visible. And there's another long task here, which is building the shadow maps. Oh yes, yeah, we have lighting turned on and the giraffes cast shadows on the on the diving board here so maybe when we turn these two things off um, it's going to get faster so let's first turn off the skins of the giraffes and um, this can be done here with the two character nodes these are these are referenced objects. The two rigs are referenced objects and there are custom attributes that allow me to turn this off. And so now we are left with a simplified rig display and I will also turn off the lighting here and turn off the ambient occlusion shadow. So now we came from three seconds and when I hit playback we are now close to nine, maybe even 10 frames per second. Let me rewind it again. And it's about 10 frames per second. Yeah, nine frames. So, okay, coming from two frames, this is not so bad. So our play blast will be much faster now, but it, it's still not satisfying because a play blast is a very time consuming thing. And it also, you know, the benefits of a play blast are very few. I cannot tumble the camera, for example. I cannot just switch to another camera. We have some other cameras here that I could use to look through and see my animation once it is calculated uh, from this camera. So we need to do a little bit more to reach real-time playback directly from here. So in the timeline, you see a yellow line appear. And this yellow line is a sign of the new cache playback feature in Maya 2019. But yellow means this cache playback is not working. When I open the script editor, I see that there are error messages that talk about this cache playback. It's actually telling me that it, the, the cache playback has been turned off because of dynamic nodes here. So there are dynamic nodes with a hair simulation system that keep this cache playback from working. What I have to do here is to actually turn off these hair system shape nodes or to turn them into a different evaluation method, which is off. So I'll copy the name of this and select all of these nodes at once. And then here in the channel box, I can turn them all at once into another simulation method, which is off basically. And now let me close all these windows here. Now when I hit playback, we are coming from nine frames per second. And you see already there's a blue line appearing here, which is the playback cache. And now suddenly we have something like 30 frames per second, which is amazing. But some people would say this is no better than the play blast that I run from time to time. Well, one thing that is already better is that I can, can look at it from every angle. And I can actually also turn on, you know, the look through another camera. So when I select this camera here, for example, look through selected. You see that the cache is not recalculated. We can still use the same cache and don't have to redo it. So that is an advantage already. Let me go back to the normal perspective camera here. So that was already an advantage that I can play and have a look at the whole thing while it's being calculated. 30 frames is not bad. So sometimes it just meets the speed of the animation. So 30 frames is kind of a minimum speed that we need. Let's see if we can still make it faster. I found out that one of the 
one of the slow things in the scene is actually the simplified rig display that we have here. The whole display is much faster when we turn back on the skins of the actual giraffes and then take these two simplified rigs here, these two, and put them on a separate layer. So I'll create a new layer and turn off the playback um, feature of this layer. And I can actually take some more things here. So for example, these, um, these uh, cameras here can be put on that layer at selected objects. And also there is some parts of the trapeze here that we can put on the layer to hide it while it's playbacking. So these objects are normally on, they are visible while I'm animating, but as soon as I hit playback or when I scrub the timeline, these objects are turned off to get the maximum performance. Now, when I do that and you see it's recaching my timeline here, let's get this finished. And I hit playback, you see that instead of 30 frames, we are suddenly you know, close to 55 frames, sometimes even 60 frames per second, which is pretty good. So coming from less than two frames per second, suddenly we have 50 frames per second. But you would still say, oh yeah, that is lame. You know, when whenever I do a change, I have to rerun that cache playback and that takes forever. Well, that's not quite right. So when I select one of these objects here, one of these control objects on the giraffe and I, and you see the keyframes appear here in the timeline, let's say I make a little change in, on this keyframe. So I move it ever so slightly so that I can set a keyframe. When I hit S, watch the blue line in the timeline. You see that it cuts out only that part that needs to be recached and, and I'm already back and I can play back this in real time or even much faster. Let's do that again here. So I take this keyframe, move the giraffe a little bit, hit the S key and you see it cuts it out. And then after a few seconds, I'm already back and I can play back the whole thing in real time from every angle with every cam camera that is visible without recaching the complete timeline. So that is a big benefit that it knows how to recache only those frames that have changed here. We can still make some more optimizations to the scene when I open the evaluation toolkit again. So we are around 60 frames per second again. Let me check that again. So yeah, 55, 57 sometimes. So it's, let's say 55 frames per second. So let's check what else we can optimize in this scene. So for example, here in the debugging, I can open the so-called scene lint window, which in, is an analysis that does things that you can also do by hand, for example analyze where there are flat animation curves. So static animation curves that have the same value in the complete animation and other things, you know, like expressions that are animated so that they get, get evaluated all the time. I can run this analysis and it gives me some examples that can be fixed. So here are the flat animation curves, for example, here are the animated expressions and it would apply fixes to all of these things. I can apply all selected fixes at once and now they are all these problems are all gone now let's see what kind of performance we have then we have deleted some animation curves here that's why we have to rerun the animation cache or the playback cache here but after that as soon as that is gone through it should be much no, a little bit, even a little bit faster than the 55 frames per second that we had before. So you see we are above 55 already. Let's finish that and see what the playback speed is now. So 58, 59 sometimes even, so it's getting even a little bit better. So now we have um, the the distance to the 30, 30 frames per second that we need to have two more characters in the scene, for example, or to turn the lights back on if you really need to see the lighting effects in your scene. 
So this is the new cached playback and the use together with the evaluation toolkit and the profiler. This is how you can analyze your scene and speed it up so that your animators can work really in real time and save a lot of time in the future of the animation. Thank you very much.